Who shall I use this to give you come? Sing and testify. Amen. We're glad you're here. Hallelujah. Give the word to you.
like we have worked all day. And I guarantee you, half that this says being in front of the TV, we've been taking care of kids. Amen. Amen. Truth, anyhow. Don't make to say amen. I know. David, his dad sent him to check on his brothers because Satan is down there going into battle against Goliath. Uh -huh. The big giant. Have you ever had any giants? Yeah. Have you ever faced them? Yeah. Now here we're talking about a little boy. But he had been taking care of his sheep. Yes. And in the process, he killed a bear and he killed a lion. All right, when he goes and saw Moses and said about him, Saul wanted David to wear his armor. Now, I want you to go with me for a minute. A six foot tall man with the armor. What a five foot boy to put his armor on to go do battle against Goliath. Do you know what our problem is? We're letting the devil put on us that we don't have to carry and we don't have to go through. Come on. David put the armor on and he put that sword and here he is trying to walk and trying to maneuver and 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 he looked and he told Saul. In my words, I can't do this. This don't fit me. I'm not comfortable. Come here, Sister Jamie. Please. Now I want you all to watch.
slain, and the giant and snake down out of it, and the devil is making fun of the son of you all and telling you, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're not going to win. But do you know that when Jesus Christ saved us, filled us with the Holy Ghost, he gave us everything we needed yes. to win. Yes. Something strange. Something strange, Brother Larry. I'm just going to speak it. I know this man of God back here set me down in a heart of faith. You all better, you better hear Strange spirit in the house. And I'm going to tell you, it's been here for a while. I'm going to say something, let's show them back up. <coughs> Help me come up. You know, my prayer is always every prayer I go that I can be a help to the people because there is so many people in need and in help that they don't need to be kicked and knocked and put down. But they need to be uplifted. And that's my prayer that God will help me to help others that hold on. Y'all pray for me. I will try this. <laughs> Savor me. Today I stop.
thankful for what you got. Brother Larry, I know I've said it a few times, but I've been here before. But I, I, I'm extremely honest when I say it. Me and Mom, we go a lot of different places. And I understand that experience is different tonight. I ain't trying to take nothing away from what God gives Mom to say. But, but, but listen to me. I don't care what kind of troubles you're going through, what kind of trials you're going through, as a corporate body or as an individual, be thankful for what you got. Brother Larry, I'm going to speak to you for just a second. I'm going to tell you, no offense against the congregation, but if everybody that's sat there to you leaves tonight, never come back. Be thankful. Give God praise. Thank you for clearing out the house, and thank you for the ones he's going to replace, because I'm going to tell you, it's ordained by God. Sister Jackie, what's ordained by God, no matter how much of hell sells against us and how much hell rages against us, how much turmoil and confusion comes our way, when it's ordained by God, it cannot be stopped. Come on. Go ahead. I promise you, I pray, I pray I'm saying a whole other different something. God's just changed my mouth all together, so you're just going to have to hold on and sit down and just buckle up real tight. I mean, you know, because I'm going to be honest, it would be real easy for me just to stay at home today. I mean, I don't promise Brother Josh will think that I'm not here now. It's had a part. I said, well, I could come with you because I'm going to be honest, Sister Jane. Didn't feel like making the trip. Didn't feel like coming over here. Hey, but you know what? There was an option in my function. Come on. Come on. Brother Josh, he wants us to praise 
Come on. To magnify him. To lift him up. You will not find in scripture what God said. Only when you're on the mountaintop do I want you to praise me. He, uh, he didn't say only when you're in the valley do I want you to praise me. He said let everything that has prayed praise ye the Lord. You know what that means? That's called being thankful. That's called I thank you Jesus. I love you Jesus. You parents, I'll say this and then I'll get out of the way because I don't want to take up the pastor's time. I'm going to hear him. But listen, I'm not a parent, I'm not a daddy, I ain't got no kids. But I know parents. You do stuff for your kids, you like to be appreciated. It's good every now and then as a parent. I thank you, Dad. I appreciate you, Dad. And you know what? It's the same thing with God. God wants to be thanked. God wants to be reverenced. God wants to be honored. God wants to be loved. I want to encourage you tonight. I'm like, Mom, I don't know what's been going on. We ain't been here. Aside from the last, uh, when, when the one brother was here a couple weeks ago, prior to that, we hadn't been here. And it's nothing that, trust me when I say I want to be here. But this is back in January. I went to church. I don't know what happened. don't know why. don't know what took place. And we can't explain the body at times. Even doctors can't. Pastor Larry got down on my back, and I ain't really been able to go anywhere. And, and if I'm being honest with you, the Wednesday we was here, and then tonight, is two of the most church services I've been a part of since January, the last part of January. So I can tell you, above anybody else, I'm thankful I'm here. I'm thankful I ain't had to leave. I'm thankful that, that you know what God is. Be gracious enough and merciful enough to, to allow me to, 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 to feel his touch and to feel his anointing. Amen. And just, and just for a little while, brother, brother Josh, I can say, I feel normal and I feel good. Amen. And, and, and if that's all I get, you know what? It was worth the trip. It was worth the trip. Communications out of your mouth uh -huh. and lie not one to another. The strange spirit is malice. If you ever look at malice, it's unfriendly feelings. Uh -huh. And if we're going to go to heaven, we've got to have our hearts right. Amen. And then you go to Mark chapter 7, it talks about what defiles a man. Yes. It's not me looking at you and see what's you got on because what you got on, there is a way that we have to dress. There is a way that we got to conduct ourselves. But those feelings of anger and Malice and all them, the spirit is sensitive, but it's not going to move over the top of that. And I'm saying this because I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Unless it stops, God will stop it because He's not going to allow His church to be like this. We got to have our spirits right. We can't go out there and act one thing and come in here and act something else because malice will send us to hell just the same as something else. I want my spirit right, Jamie. I don't want my heart with anything in it. When I stand before God, it's going to be clean heart because only the pure, the pure in heart's going to see God. Yes. We can't go to heaven having malice and anger and all that stuff against one another. We've Amen. got to be right. Yes. And the Spirit ain't going to move over top of that stuff. Amen. 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 Once I was walking the road, it seems dark to
if the Lord will, uh, we're going to preach about the house of mercy. Amen. We're sitting in the place that's a house of mercy. And Jesus came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And if we can't get this right, right now, for what's fixing to happen, what's uh, there's been this has been in preparation for a long time. And as the Lord began to speak, and I believe it's closer, you look at the signs of how the end is upon us. How many blows the end's upon us? And it's close. And I believe there's going to be a revival in this end time. That this church and the churches around is not going to be able to hold the souls that's going to come into these buildings. Come on, come on church. You, you may not agree with pastors, but I believe that, that this building here and, and as, as we built this and designed this, uh, it'll hold just comfortably around 180 people. But you think that that's, not, that's just a drop in a bucket of what's going to be saved in the end time. Amen. So we're in a house of mercy, and in that I was thinking we're going to have to uh, really get things together and show people mercy. No matter if we don't see eye to eye on things, amen. The most important part in this uh, in this right here is believing that Jesus died and rose. He gave his life for us. That people can come to an altar of repentance and get their life right with God. And then we've got to allow them and preach to them and teach them. Well, I'm talking about a generation that has never known what we know. Amen. They don't know nothing about Jesus. They don't know about nothing about the Lord. They don't know nothing about this way. Amen. But I'm talking about we are, as they come into the shop, we are the house of mercy. Amen. And I believe that God has got enough for whoever comes in because he said, whosoever will. He said, let them come and take of the water of life freely. So God's got enough for every one of us. Amen. And he's got enough for all those out there that's going to come in. So I want to tell you something. I was thinking today, meditating. You know, there's people that's boasting and, 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 and thinking about how that uh, uh, even the, the Gentiles in one place in the Bible. We'll read here a little bit if the Lord will. But I want to follow the action of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, as we're talking about this mercy, you know, the Gentiles at one time, they talked to one that was kind of bragging or whatever. But he said, don't brag. Don't you boast. Because you know what? You was grafted in. Amen. We don't need to boast and get up in ourselves to where that nobody else can get no help. Because I want to tell you something. The same way that you was grafted in, the Holy Ghost can take you out. Amen. God can take you right out of that fire. And I'm talking about the Jews. It's natural. Amen. The Jews, is who, that's God's people. When God turns back to the Jews, you believe what you want to believe. When God turns back to the Jews, and I'm like this, I don't believe there'll ever be another Gentile saved. So you better get in while you can. Amen. You better get in the vine. What am I saying? You better get in the vine while you can. While there's mercy. Amen. Because then we better show mercy. Amen. If you want mercy, we got to show mercy. We're living in a time that people don't want to show mercy. But how long did it take us? to get to the place to where we're at. Amen? It took us a long time. And we're still not home yet, church. We're still not home. The Bible, Jesus said, those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen? We're not there yet. We're not. We're in a saved condition. We're not saved yet. We'll say that when somebody, oh, there was two or three got saved last night. I understand that. But still, we're not saved yet. We're in a saved condition condition. Amen. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his love. Thank God for everything that he's done for us. Hallelujah. I'm talking about church. We're serving a God that is more than able. Glory to God, this is just as loud. But I'm here to tell you tonight that I'm talking about a God that's got enough in the house of God. He's got enough mercy. He's got enough wisdom. He's got enough strength. He's got enough healing power. Lord God, he hasn't lost anything, but it's all up to us. If we want ever, you know what we want to do? It's been preached here for the Josh. We're going to have to come together. If something just I'm talking about upsets our flesh. God, Lord, that God must get over herself and grow up in the Lord and say, I'm in the house of mercy. Let's grow up, church, and let God take his love. Hallelujah. Lord, it may get dry. Preach on. 
that I'm going to preach. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn to the fifth chapter of the book of St. John. Fifth chapter of the book of St. John. Start reading from verse 1. The Bible reads like this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of infant folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Then the impotent man Answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus saith to him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said to me, Take up thy bed and walk. And at, then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing Come unto thee. Give the Lord a hand. You may be seated. And I want to preach tonight about a house of mercy. Amen. We're in a house of mercy. And I'm like this. And I want the moving of the Holy Ghost. That's uh, kind of a, a what we call the troubling of the water. When the Holy Ghost begins to move upon you. And I'm like this. She said, well, I wouldn't say that I'm like this right here tonight. There's been some things that in uh, a few services here that God has used me. And I'm not bragging. It's all to God be the glory. Amen. I don't do a lot of prophesying. But in the, uh, a couple services back, God has used me in both services to prophesy. Amen. To people. And I believe that in this year that we're coming, there's going to be more saved than you've ever seen. Lord God, I'm talking about, but we're going to have to be ready for what's coming. And I'm talking about this place right here. I want to be just like a hospital, be a house of mercy. Amen. And if it takes teaching after teaching after teaching, God can do a quick work. You remember the 51 night revival? That Brother Bo, I'm going to go ahead and say it in this year, 2024. I know we're going into the fourth month. 
But I, I feel this in the Holy Ghost, Lord God, in this year. The 51 night revival is nothing what God's going to do if the church will come together, Lord God, and lay everything aside. Lord God, put our differences aside and let the Holy Ghost have its way. Amen. It ain't my way, it's not your way, but it's His way. Amen. If we'll ever get on board and say, God, I want to build a house of mercy for the people that's going to come in. There was people, Lord God, that was lame. There was people that was blind. There was people that was laying on cots and they could not get into this place for the church. But I'm talking about there was a man that was more than a man that walked on that place. Lord God, he told him, he said, rise. Lord God, he said, well, now be made whole. I'm here to tell you tonight, church, it will get on board with what God is doing in our midst. Oh, you miss what God is doing in our midst. We'll find out that Sister Teresa can come out of that wheelchair. Lord God, I tell you, you say what you want to say, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus is able, Lord God, he's more than able, Lord God, to heal the sick, cast out the and raise the dead. You know what, I may get looks tonight. But I'm here to tell you, Brother Sean, I haven't talked to him since the last time he's at church. There's going to be people that still have to get on board with what God's doing. And I don't want, I don't want to lose that. But I was telling God the other day, I said, Lord, if they're not with me, you know what to do. Amen. And I love the church. But I tell you, we're going to have to get on board. God's what the, I thought that he wants to fill this church up. He wants to heal the broken heart. He wants to mend the broken heart. He wants to heal those that are, I'm talking about that is oppressed and depressed. Amen. God wants to move in and take their mind. That's what the problem is. I, I was looking today. Look, God, as I was going up that mountain, uh, Sister Jane was walking up through there. Look, God, there was an old chain that was wrapped around the tree. Didn't even know it was there. And you know what that chain had done? Look, God, it killed that tree. Are oh, you listening to me tonight? There's people for the palace that has, I'm talking about being banged up with chains. Lord God, chains of darkness. But they're, we're in the house of mercy. Lord and God, in this time, Lord God, that we show some mercy and use some wisdom in the house of God that we can see those chains get destroyed off people's lives. This here, Bethesda. If you look it up, it's a house of kindness. House of mercy or flowing water. But what does the Bible say? Jesus said, if you believe on me as the scriptures have said. He said, out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Now think about that when you look at this here. This Bethesda, it's a house of mercy or flowing water. I believe we need to have a continual flowing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. One place in the Bible, I think it was the book of James, talks about how that sweet water and bitter water can come out of the same town. Come on. Glory. I told you I'm just going to obey God tonight. Since you pass that something, that is so true. We can't be bitter one day and sweet the next. That goes back to double minded. You know what the Bible says about double minded? The Bible says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you know what? It says, Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, we got a church. Amen. I'm talking about we got We are the church of the living God. Lord God, Jesus is my Father. Oh, glory to God. He's equipped us with the power. He's equipped us for the blow with mercy and love and kindness and gentleness. Lord God, let the fruit of the Spirit be manifested in the body of Christ. If you ever want to see your family, and I'm going to tell you they're coming this year. Come on. If you ever want to see your family in the house of God, outside these walls, show some mercy. Outside these walls, be kind. Outside these walls, 
be gentle. I, let the fruit of the spirit. If you don't have it, I get on my knees and say, Jesus, I've got to have the fruit of the spirit. Because we're in a house of mercy. Build a habitation. Come on. Build a place that God wants to dwell in. Build a place that God wants to be in. Come on, I'm not saying you don't have nothing. Do you, are you got your ears on? Are you listening? We need to have mercy. We need to show some kindness. We need to, Lord God, if we can't help them when they come in, I'm going to tell you something. They're not going to be saved. They're not going to be, even though when they come to all, I talk about that saved condition. They're not going to have it right. They're not going to get it right right off. But we're going to have to show some mercy. We're going to have to show some kindness. I'm going to, let me tell you, there's drug addicts that's coming. There's alcoholics that's coming. Lord God, Sister Amanda, your brother is coming. Pastor, I wouldn't say that. You know what people want to speak? Against everything that God is doing. And you know what you're doing? You're slowing down the process. You won't get on board. You're slowing the process. But I'm here to tell you, God's fixing to stand up. And he's going to say the process will be slow no more. But by the cause, if you don't want to get on board, Jesus will move you out. It's a house of mercy. Uh -huh. You remember, it may have been the last time we preached a couple of times back. We've created and made Jesus a monster in the house of God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why am I saying that? We've made him out to be something that he is not. Go ahead. And there is a right and appropriate way for us to dress and look like. But I like this. I don't believe it's the way that people think it is. Come on, amen. You might get upset at me. But I've been praying, talking to God, and God's been dealing with my heart. But it's time that the church, Lord God, I'm talking about the church. He bought me with a price. I'm not my own no more. You're not your own. You know what, what does that mean? If you've got to obey the voice of God, you've got to go the way that he said. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. He didn't say some man or some woman, but he said, I'm the way. Look like the truth and the life. You've got to come to Jesus. Jesus said one place. He said, if you climb up any other way, the Bible says the same is a thief and a robber. I'm here to tell you tonight, let's create a place for where people can come in and get feel the mercy. Let me tell you, I ain't been watching a whole lot on it. But you know who Israel is, don't you? It's God's people. Come on. I don't care. I'm like this. I don't care what man says. That's God's people. They've done all kinds of witness. All, all, I'm talking about over the years, read the Bible. But what would God do? He would still have mercy. He would still break them out. And I'm going to tell you something. If the nations that's rised up against Israel, I want them to be even in their country. Amen. If the United States of America don't get behind Israel, amen? I'm talking about get behind Israel. You say, what are you preaching, Lord God? I'm telling you, the Bible teaches us, really, Mrs. Sister Jackie's talking about, teaches us to pray for Israel. Hey, Amen. Uh, and what have we been doing all these years? Uh, that we just, oh, Lord, touch Israel. But, Lord God, we should be praying uh, for Israel. That's God's people. Uh, we just been grafted in. Uh, we can show some mercy. We can show some kindness. Why did he do what he done? To provoke them to anger. Oh, shut up. 
to provoke them uh, to anger. Get them jealous uh, that they'll turn back to God. Come on, show you the book. We've got so high minded. Come on, church, we've got so high minded in ourselves. Because God was merciful enough us to put his Holy Ghost in us. Uh, but she bubbled in that. We've got so high minded we can't even be brought off the high horse. Oh, I've got the Holy Ghost. God said to go with this, and I'm going to do it. How many times have we made statements and said things? And then God say, uh uh. If you're going to listen to him, we're going to have to listen to him. And I'm like this. We can't say, well, because I said this here. And I understand we guard certain things. But all at the same time, listen to me. When people come in and they give their life to God, if we never give them an opportunity to sing, testify, oh, what it was, you hid all of yours. Come on. You hid all of yours. Nobody, you, you used so much to stress, you took that scripture to heart. You hear all of yours, but God seen it all. Just like David in the Bible, he tried to hide it, but God seen it all. And you know what happened? There was, I'm talking about there's six of the be men and women of God come to you, whoever you may be, and going to reveal some things. Going to tell like just like Lord God when He comes to David, when Nathaniel, Nathan, who it was, Nathaniel came to talk to David. You know what he said? He began to tell that story. Lord God, I'm going to open God tonight because there's mercy in the house. God showed David mercy. It's time for us to show some mercy to some of God's children. They're lost, but they're God's children. <laughs> Believe that? Come on. They're lost. God knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Amen. Come on. I was his child before I was ever conceived. Oh, you was? Why'd you do all that mean stuff? I had to repent. We was born into sin. Come on, church. Come on, we need If you're not that educated, I'd get back in the book. Son has 
made free is free indeed. Look out for the spirit of the Lord. Is they want liberty in here? Look out, it's still not all the way right. Look where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Look out, when you're all hateful and pound up, I know sometimes we may get upset, but we should not. I said we should not allow that to change our demeanor. We should not allow that to control us. If it does, it's a problem in your life. And talk to Jesus, and he'll get it out. Why? Because he's got mercy. You want mercy? The Bible's right. You're going to have to show mercy. You want to be blessed? Start blessing others. You want to have your family saved? Rejoice with the nurses getting saved. Amen. Come on, this is like going to be the addition that all the way back to preschool, kindergarten level stuff. Hear that what they was taught there at that time that the first one that got in was made whole. But see, when Jesus walked on the scene, it didn't matter whoever else needed it, he had it. Yeah. And that's where it's at. We can't just, when 15 or 20 comes in, Brother Dallas, we can't just focus on one. Come on. Amen. Focus on one. Oh, that's, oh, I gotta work hard. That's my, that's my buddy. That's my family. Hey, get in here and let the Holy Ghost work. Amen. Do nothing. Don't get up and say, oh, I didn't get to sing. I invited them, and they said, will you sing my song? If the Holy Ghost moves, well, God, they'll understand when they come out of Satan, tears running down. That's their problem, church. We got in this slump. We got in this way that we got to sing, that we got to testify. But God, let the Holy Ghost have his way. And I'm like this. This is fixing to happen in this church. And I know this because I felt that spirit of offense. They don't like prophecy when it comes in this church. You get mad if you want to. But the Bible says, and if you're going against it, you're going against the Bible. The Bible says covenant to prophecy. And it's not just a preacher or a pastor. He said, what did he say right there in the book of Acts? Even in Joel, he said, in the last days, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Either we're going to take the whole book or we're going to tear it apart. I don't want to tear it out. I'm going to eat the whole book. But when they come in, and the whole, look here at the gifts and calling of God. It's without repentance for God. If they come in, it is sad. That call is there from the beginning. It's there. Oh, I don't believe that, Pastor. You don't believe the Word of God. Come on. Man. That gift was there, Brother Buck, before you ever came to hear. It's without repentance. But it's once we come to hear, give our life to God. It may not be at this hour, but we dealt down somewhere we got right with Jesus. We receive the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the Holy Ghost, what will it do? It'll lead and guide us. It'll show you things to come. That show you, that's, that's the type of prophecy. And prophecy fixes the fall. I thought about today how that in the last days. So we've been saying this for, I've been doing this for about 20 years now. We've been saying this for the past 20 years, longer than that. 
Since I've been going to church here and start talking about prophesy, Jesus kind of, we're in the last days. We are in the last days. We've been in the last days since the day of Pentecost. Yeah. So when people preach that, don't get upset. But, oh, he said it was coming 10 years ago. He's still coming. And love thing, all this stuff that comes up, we're in the house of mercy. Everything that comes up, let me tell you something. There seems to be something. You know how like people was getting all scared when April the eighth was coming. Oh, the end of the world's coming. One chapter I read this one thing. Uh, I, Jesus is coming back in the fall. I said you're a false prophet because the Bible says. See, this is what you got to know the word. The Bible, I, look here, I don't know if he's coming this year. I can't say that. And when somebody rises up and said he's coming this fall, the Bible says no man knoweth the hour or the day, not even the son, but the father only. That's what the Bible, you got to take the word of God over top of any man. It don't matter. Man's going to tell you, but God, but God will never tell you. That's when you say that's a false problem. When it goes against the word of God. That's right. Why don't, why don't we, we want to hear encouraging words? If someone's prophesying to somebody that God is going to do this and God's going to do that. Why don't we want to hear? We always want to hear, God's going to kill you if you don't get it right. Within six months, you're a dead man.
One night, one poor, and what was going to happen to them on the day of Pentecost? They were all filled. What happened when they got full? I've done that illustration here one night, and I know it might blow some people's mind up. Oh, pastor's back to the Holy Ghost. Don't have it. I have one, you just keep pouring it. Take one bottle of water, it's water, Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost. They ain't two different ones. Either when Jesus came in, the Holy Ghost came in, or he didn't come in. That's something that, and I'm, I'm not being mean at all. When you're filled with it, you will speak in tongues. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues. But what is that prior to, before you ever start speaking, what was that inside of you? It was the Holy Ghost. I'm going to just tell it just like it is. It was the Holy Ghost. People don't like it, it's truth anyway. You know what we haven't learned? Here's what we have not learned. We have not learned how to teach people to keep them in the house of God until they're filled with it, talking like us. Oh, they'll be up front. You ever see them get up front? Oh, they'll tie the church house apart. I've had this said to me. Shouting them down, crawling the floor. <coughs> Come up, pat you on the back. Boy, you was close to that. Supposed to walk. <laughs> Come on. Be in the supposed to get in the hole, you guys. Don't get mad at it. You done had it. You just wasn't filled with it. There's the difference. You can get mad and never come back after tonight, but I love you. I'm going to, because people's going to have to be taught with the devils of what this Holy Ghost really is. They don't understand. When you look here, Paul said it right. If they come in here, they've never been around it. And all we do is speak in tongues all night long. I'm not saying don't speak in tongues. I'm telling you to speak. But I'm talking about I believe God knows how to handle when they come into church. Come on. Yes. Instead of us up here giving out a message, Paul said, he'd rather you give five words in a known language of tongue than 10,000 in an unknown. Why is that? Well, if the sinners come in the unsaved, you know what? They'll be like, we'll be like a ball of iron again. Well, they're a bunch of idiots. Can you understand? They look older. Can you understand what he's saying? I'm not, I'm not preaching against the Holy Ghost for the ones that's right now in your mind that's wondering, come on, come back to the house of mercy. I still believe in Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Come on. I'm pumped full of You're full of the Holy Ghost. Now let's, let's use some wisdom on how to get people in the family of God. Because we could get them, look at the 51 night revival. We had, I think it was 43 or 45 that came to an altar. 38 of them was filled with the Holy Ghost. And even after they're filled for the film, what happens after that? Do we really know how to treat people? Come on. Do we know how to keep them in the house of God? Look at my, if they got a little bit of like a if you can't do, if all you can do is open your mouth, slip a zipper on there. Don't you get mad, Pastor. Put a zipper on your mouth. That's the first thing the Holy Ghost should got a hold of. I heard that last night. Why? Because that little tongue is the unruly mirror. The only thing that contained that is the Holy Ghost. Everything else has been tamed by mankind, but man has never been able to tame that tongue. It took the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy Ghost to tame that. Say, well, I don't like that, Pastor. I'm going to take it take it up with Jesus. Because I'm stuck where I'm at. He planted me. I'm not going to uproot myself. He planted me. I'm sticking right here. Come on. I hope some of you hear what Brother Wynn, Pastor Wynn said. If they come in, they're 
yard, bought off, eight minutes off, leave them alone. If they come in with a dime, leave them alone. Well, man, Pastor, you're different than you used to be. Yeah. I've been somewhere with Jesus in fiction. It's called mercy and kindness. Amen. That's what this is. That's what all this goes back to that love. I'm like this. There's some that don't understand. I'm going to go a step further. If there's women that comes in, they got slacks on, pants, whatever, leave them alone. I don't need you pulling the sign on the sideline saying I'm the coach tonight. I pray that God rebukes you. Amen. If we can get in here enough, you watch God change you. If we'll leave them alone for a little while, God can change them. Maybe not to your specifications, but God can change them. You know what? And I used to say this a lot. I'm just about through. But I used to say this a lot. And it's true. God does look on the heart. And that should scare us to death. Amen. And I used to, when people get up, they, they'd say that about, about the outward part. I say, oh, this is that. But look here, God does look on the heart. That's where he's looking at, really. In God's eyes, you know what I can say? In God's eyes, what are we, church, if you're by the way? We're all naked in the eyes of God. A swerve. You can't find a swerve, you're going to be losing. So I come to like this, I come to realize this, the more I, I fight against God, I'm going to lose. So you might as well just say, okay, Lord, here I am, I'm yours. Teach me on how to be kind. Teach me to show mercy. Teach me to have love like I've never had. Come on. When they come in, they're not going to look like us. Summer's coming. We didn't look like us when we first got saved. Amen. Summer's coming. I'm not back up on them. There is, Sister Pat, there is a right way. Yeah. When it gets down to where it's form fitting, now I'm not I'm talking about actually being in this a while. God's going to bring it out a way, Brother Dallas, that they're going to understand. Amen. They're going to be so in love with you. More than likely, listen, more than likely, if they're reading and we got them interested in the book, you know what's going to happen? They're going to get in there and they'll come and ask questions. They'll say, I had something to start tomorrow. say, you know what I told them? I said, I'm not going to, I can't do that. And I said, if you want me to pray with you, talk to God. I said, you're looking for an answer. I said, I'll pray. I said, but now she comes back and said, you ain't going to get mad if I ask you something. I'm doing something. I said, no. I said, you can't do nothing to make me mad. It's real with that. I said, but if God tells me, I said, you're asking me to go pray to help you pray. I said, if God tells me something, if I come back, I said, I don't want you to be mad if he gives me scripture. Come on, come on. They said, okay. So we're going to see. When I get the answer, or if they get the answer, I pray to get the answer to work because see, people get upset at people and they hold grudges for 20 years, and you can't have a move of God in the house. Come on. That, that, this happens so much. Little things fast coming up. Oh, I thought they had told us. Amen. Come on. What about your spat coming up? They did not see. Not where we're at, church. This is where we're living at. Right and then when it happens, well, thanks to us, they're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. What you do behind closed doors that you're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let's just look at it like this. They may have a bad day. I made two calls last night. And Pastor said, I'm sorry. I was wrong. People, people don't know how to do what God says. When the Spirit starts dealing with you, you know what you got to do? 
Now the following. And you know what most of you are going to say? I didn't think of you know that. But yet, I don't want anything growing that's going to cause you or hinder you to want to be in a service where I'm at. The most of all church we can learn is that in the house of mercy is show kindness, love, and talk to God and say, Lord, teach me to help somebody. Not, not that Lord, we'll say, Lord, teach me to help. And if we want to teach everybody that comes to the door, but if it's Lord, teach me to help one. We've got to get one to help first. When we get one, then there's going to be others who start coming. So we're, this here is the best place. And this altar is open. Anything. Anything. This goes for any of us. I get this altar a lot. It don't matter what you've done, what you're going through, you're in a house of mercy. And I believe tonight, if you want to leave here different than what you came in, because Sister Judy didn't know she came in late, but I felt when I come in the house of God tonight, the, the, that spirit that should not be here. So what do we have to do as they come and say, come on, Brother Josh. And I'm like this, and I'll say this towards Brother Josh in any way. But any of the musicians, anybody, if you feel you need to pray, we can pray and have an altar call without music. But as they come, if you have anything, look here, let me tell you what, I believe we're closer than we can imagine in home. If there's anything in our hearts, anything, we're in a place that there's mercy tonight. And you're going to need that. You're going to need that in the end. Anything that we say or do in this life, the Bible says this. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to give an account. This is every one of us. Okay, so well, I know the blood. That's great. But we're all going to give an account for the deeds that were done in this body, whether they be good or bad. It don't matter. We're going to give an account for it. So tonight, and I believe if they're under the blood, you're going to hear when you stand before it, you hear, well done. Now good and faithful servant. That will be you standing there that's not God going against his word. You'll look in his records. There's a record that he had. Well done. Now good and faithful. You don't want to hear the words depart. I sent you a word. I tried to get you there. But you wouldn't move. You wouldn't move.
things that I used to be wrong. And this is what I wrote down. Guarding your heart. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. The heart is the control center from which we are, all of our decisions are made. The heart is where you have the will, your attitude, and your intentions. Whatever's in the heart will overflow. Because out of the heart comes the issues of life. It's the source of your thoughts, your actions, and your words. With your heart, you choose good and evil. Your conscience sends out a message whether something is right or wrong. The heart that is in connection with God is able to choose the good every time. If the heart that opens itself to others, impure influences become blind and confused when it comes to discerning between good and evil. How can we cleanse our way? By taking heed to the word. Psalms 119, 9-10. Our hearts become impure when we willfully sin again and again. When we keep doing something we know is wrong, repeatedly we Without repenting, it could be things like dishonesty, envy, watching impure things, holding a grudge. It happens when we don't want to stop doing it, even though you know it is evil. But when we decide to give up our own will and always give our life to God, He cleanses us and, and purifies the heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And that's my prayer. I'm not always right. There's times I'm wrong. Many times, Lord, I'm wrong. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. This means we get a new attitude, a new will, which is desire to always choose the good and do God's will. The heart doesn't become impure because you are tempted. It becomes impure when you allow that temptation into your heart. If we keep repeatedly, willfully sinning, it causes the heart to be hardened and blemished. And in Proverbs it says, if we're often reproved and harden, harden ourselves, then we know it's without remedy. It can cause the heart to be hardened and blemished. Sometimes we, we fall, but a fall doesn't mean your heart is in here. Your reaction to the fall proves what's in your heart. If you fall and regret it and sorrow and repent, then you have a pure heart that is open to God and He can immediately forgive you. But if you shrug it off as you, as you don't care, then you are hardened in your heart. Your heart becomes impure. Your heart closes itself to God. In Proverbs 4.25, it says, Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. We got to do our uttermost to keep our hearts pure because you are the heart. If your heart is pure, then everything else stemming from life is pure. Your actions are a result of what is in that heart. Jesus says clearly in Matthew 12, 34, and 35, A good man out of the treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We could also say that not only does the mouth speak, but the mind thinks and the body acts. That's why it says so strongly in Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence. Yes. Guard your hearts, because what is in your heart becomes your life. Matthew 5 and 8 said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who really knows it? The Lord searches the heart and tries the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Ezekiel 36 and 26, A new heart, a heart of flesh, instead of a heart of stone. The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can understand it fully and know it? Secret motives. In Matthew 13 and 15, Mark 7, 21 through 22. 
if you read this thing, there's things in there you really don't know it's in there. Can you get tested? Get tested. Get, let somebody pull up one of your kids just see what's in there. Let somebody pull up your husband or wife just see what's in there. Romans 1, 21, Jeremiah 16 and 12, Mark chapter 7, 7 through 23. A good man out, out of his heart. Because like we said, sweet water and bitter water don't come from the same fountain. For thou, o Lord, are good and ready to forgive and cleanse us in mercy to all who call upon the name of the Lord. He is mercy to us all. Yes. And we can repent and he'll show us, but we can't just keep going and doing the same thing. We can't just keep doing willfully going and doing like, well, I ask God to forgive me when I get done doing this. He sees all things. You, in Jeremiah it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. In Matthew 6, 21, for where the treasure is, there is your heart will be also. You are the heart. What the follows the man, I read it early, I told you earlier, and we all want to read that. I read it over and over. And God keep in me a clean heart. Yes. Because every day there'll be issues of life come up. And if we don't watch, it's very easy to get something in our hearts. And when we get it in there and it grows up, the root of bitterness springs up and grows up. And if we don't get rid of it real fast, then we're being in trouble with God. Amen. Giving us the word. He's over and over. He's bringing this to us to get us to a place. Because with any of that um, thing, any of those things that are hard, it'll be a sad day one day when you hear it depart from me. Amen. We can live that way if we want to and say, well, Jesus. He forgives me, and I'm going to go on, and I'll make heaven my home. If it goes against his word, you won't make heaven your home. Amen. So it shows some mercy. It shows some kindness. Because it's, it's true, she said, somebody messes with your family, your kids, with a close friend, then you're going to find out who the real you is. You're going to find out if the Holy Ghost has got control or if your flesh has got control. It's my spit song. you find out if you got the real Holy Ghost or not. That's a tough one. I've had spit right my face, right back in my mouth. You'll find out if you've got the goods or not. I'm telling you, church. Because whatever was in there, she's behind what she, whatever was in there, you know what it's going to do? It'll manifest itself. You can't help it. It'll come out all night. And you'll be like, where did that come from? Then when the Holy Ghost checks you, that you can say, okay, Lord, I'm going to work on this. Teach me how to get this under control. We really got something good here, but we just got to get on board with Jesus. Not on board with man's teaching. I know you don't like hearing it, I can't help it. And I'm getting away from man's ways. Man, man didn't die for me, Jesus died for me. Man didn't say I'm the way. You're trying to right now. Jesus said, I'm the way. So I'm going to follow Jesus. And I know if I follow him, he'll take me all the way home. He'll take you all the way home. So I love you tonight, church. We have announcements. Uh, Larry, can I say something? The Lord spoke this pretty early in the service. But I don't know if I can explain it. Don't get comfortable in the house of God. That, that's what's going on. People are getting comfortable. In the house of God, Eli the priest got comfortable in the house of God, and then we got we are we are fixing to have you know we are going to have I'm, we're going to have people coming, 
and you're not going to agree with a lot of stuff about it. <coughs> they're going to be different, and they're going to be strange, you know. You're, you may not want them around, but well, you got to have the right attitude. We, uh, the Lord is showing me a pump, you know, like a pump, and I got the little pump, and the pump, the water out of the well, and they were brought down in there, and that, uh, the rubber seals would work like something, they lose all the fire. And then you got to pump the prices off. And then, then they get to the point, Larry, where you can pump them all day. And you'll never get any water out of the river. And there's whales that you can't get any water out of. James speaks about it. He said there were clouds carried away by ten whales without water. But it's people that have got comfortable in the house of God. They're just comfortable. This is what I do. This is my routine. This is how it is. I, I don't want no change. And nothing's going to change. It's not going to be no different. This is the way we are. But God, God doesn't want us to be that way. He's trying to lead us. We can't be comfortable. We've got to press. Paul said to press towards the mark. That means you can't stay where you're at. you got to keep pushing. Man. you got to keep going. You can't stop where you're at. I'm not happy where I'm at, Josh. I'm not happy with the heart I have for people right now. When I read in the Word of God about the stuff Jesus was doing, the stuff that, and I'm not talking about the healings. I'm talking about the love. That they have for people. Josh, I'm not happy. I want to see people touched. Not Lord, I love to see people healed, but I want to see them saved. I want to see their lives changed by the power of God. <laughs> but we can't get comfortable. Man. We can't just sit on what God's given us. The anointing that the music carries is amazing. The anointing that the word carries is amazing. But we sit on it because we say this is this is my normal Sunday. Uh -huh. This is my normal Wednesday. This is what I do every week. So what? I didn't come here just to every time I walk through these doors, Josh, I'm expecting help. Yes. I'm expecting to hear something, to see something, to experience something, for God to move in some way to help me. Yes. I need help. I fight battles. I go through things, and this is the only place I can come to get my help. You can't go to They're not going to give you any help, Josh, in the hospital. They're not going to give you any help down there at the DHH hall. You know what they're going to do? They're going to offer you another meditation. They're going to offer you another uh, doctor, another way, another thing. Right there, right here at this altar is the actual deliverance Amen. that people need. Amen. Amen. But if we can't give them the, the, the water that they're desiring. See, when Jesus went to that well that day, everybody else that had found that woman at that well, I believe was bitter, was hateful, talked bad to her. But Jesus sat there and offered her a drink of water. She wasn't at the well that time of day by accident. Larry, she was there that time of day because she couldn't go earlier in the day because everybody was rude to her Amen. because she had been married so many times. Because she didn't dress like they dressed. She didn't smell right. She didn't look right. She was dating one of their husbands who was going to be her next husband. But Jesus didn't see it that way. We can't see it that way. We got to see them for what Jesus. We got to see a soul. What did they always say? Look past the fall. There's a need in there. A desire in their heart that needs to be met. If we can get to that place. Well, uh, when we just start to talk to them, Larry, with kindness and love and begin to draw them into the presence of God. God can change their lives. But if we just run them off as soon as they get here because we don't agree with them. Y'all know. I watched, I watched a woman in pants get the Holy Ghost last night. It's not, I'm, now I fully believe, Josh, I'm like y'all. I believe in dressing right. But my God, God can move on them. They don't got to be dressed right to get moved on. God can change them just how they are. God can get a hold of them. But we've got to get them in the presence of God. Yes. I just appreciate it, Josh, because he's working on me. He's changing who I am and, and molding me into what he wants me to be. And if I will allow him, if we will allow him, he can do wonderful things in our lives. We can ser seriously see some great things. But we've got the Bible to work. I just thank you and I appreciate it. Y'all pray for us.
looking for a birthday party we had, but somebody's got rid of it. So, anybody got any birthdays tonight? 